In this video, we consider maximum likelihood estimation of the moving average model of order 1. The moving average model of order 1 states that yt is equal to an intercept mu plus epsilon t plus alpha times epsilon t minus 1. Here, epsilon t is an independent process that is identically distributed over time with, with a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. This holds for t equal to 1 up to time t. Moreover, we set epsilon 0 equal to 0. The model parameters are containing the vector theta that is given by mu alpha and sigma squared and our task is to estimate theta. Note here that epsilon t minus 1 is an unobserved variable meaning that we cannot estimate theta by least squares estimation. We will have to rely on maximum likelihood estimation in order to estimate mu alpha and sigma squared. What we may note about the moving average model of order 1 is that yt given epsilon t minus 1 is normally distributed with mean mu plus alpha times epsilon t minus 1 and variance sigma squared. As mentioned, we do not observe the epsilons, so we cannot rely on this conditional distribution in order to compute the conditional density of yt for the log likelihood function. Instead, we will rely on the fact that we have set epsilon 0 equal to 0. Then note that given that epsilon 0 is equal to 0, we are actually able to compute epsilon 1. Specifically, we have epsilon 1 is equal to y1 minus mu minus alpha times epsilon 0 simply by construction of the model. Note that epsilon 0 is equal to 0, so epsilon 1 is simply y1 minus mu. Likewise, given that we know epsilon 1, we can compute epsilon 2 that is equal to y2 minus mu minus alpha times epsilon 1. Again, we can insert epsilon 1, so we have that epsilon 2 is equal to y2 minus mu minus alpha times y1 minus mu. We can proceed with this until epsilon capital T that is given by yt minus mu minus alpha times epsilon t minus 1. Note here by construction Epsilon t is simply just a function of all the y variables. So we have that if epsilon 0 is set equal to 0, then we can compute all values of the epsilon. In particular, we have that the conditional expectation of yt given yt minus 1 down to y1 and conditional on L epsilon 0 being equal to 0 is normally distributed with mean mu plus alpha times epsilon t minus 1 and with variance sigma squared. This means that the conditional density of yt given yt minus 1 down to y1 and conditional on epsilon 0 being equal to 0 is simply just 1 over the square root of 2 pi times sigma squared times the exponential function of minus yt minus mu minus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared divided by 
2 times sigma squared. We will use this conditional density in order to obtain the likelihood function. We can write the likelihood function as the joint density of all the y variables conditional on epsilon 0 being equal to 0. Similar to the autoregressive model of order 1, we can factorize this joint density into the product of conditional densities. Here the conditional density is the same as before. Where we use theta in order to signify that the epsilon t depends on the model parameters. In order to compute epsilon t, we can use exactly the same recursions as shown previously. Lastly, the maximum likelihood estimator is obtained by maximizing the log likelihood function. Note that this is a highly nonlinear maximization problem that we cannot solve analytically. Hence, we have to rely on numerical methods. Thank you for watching.